you guys. I'm out running some errands on this beautiful, sunny Sunday. So bright. My future is so bright. Um, anyway, I was trying to wait until I got out of the glare of the sun, but it looks like this entire strip is going to be um, blessing me with the sun. So I'll just be squinty and you'll just uh, love me anyway. <laughs> I'm out running some errands and um, picking up grapes. I woke up this morning with a strong sensation to grape. So I went out and picked up a whole bunch of grapes. The past three or four weeks have been all about apples for me. I not I never considered myself a mono fruit eater, but that's how it's been um, turning out to be. I like some variety in some things and then other things I'm okay with like eating the same thing over and over again all the time. And I usually get like that, like I'll have um, I'll, ha I'll make something and I can eat it all week. I can have leftovers, I can, um, or keep making it because I'm not really a big fan of leftovers, but I can keep making the same thing every night for dinner over and over again for myself. Ron, he needs more variety, but for me, I could like make a breakfast burrito every day with like um, beans and kale and some wild rice, uh, maybe some sauteed potatoes, like fajita, onions and peppers, and like roll it all up into a burrito. Mm -mm -mm. I could probably eat that every day. And I have, like there are times where I like live off, lived off of that for weeks at a time. But with the fruit, um, I'm, I usually like a lot of variety. Like I, I'll do oranges for a while, tangerines, uh, ruby red grapefruit. Red grapefruit are my absolute favorite fruit and peaches, love peaches a lot. But lately, I guess since um, it's winter, well, almost winter here in Pennsylvania, and we don't have a lot of, you know, tropical fruits available this time of year. The, the watermelons are crap, the uh, pineapples are crap, strawberries are not ripe, they're really hard, and they taste very um, earthy because they're not ripe. So, I haven't been eating a lot of that kind of stuff. Well, I haven't been eating any of that kind of stuff. So I've been doing, I usually do oranges, like a lot of citrus in the winter time because it's abundant, it still has good flavor, and um, the pricing isn't too bad. But this year, I've been all about the apples. And I've been eating a lot of apples um, and pears. I've been juicing them and eating them. like. I'll just like slice up two apples and just like chomp, chomp, chomp on that. So it's been, uh, it's been fun. But today I woke up and was like, mm, grapes, grape lime juice is like calling my name. So I went and got some grapes from the Middle Eastern market and they tend to have a lot of the seeded things that other places don't have. Like I get all summer long, I get my seeded watermelon from them. And it's the full seeded, like the black seeds, full of seeds, nice and sweet watermelon from them. And I usually get my seeded grapes from them as well. Today they didn't have any seeded grapes though, so I just got the seedless. You know, um, the purists will say that it's best to always have seeded, and I do agree. But if they don't have it, the next best thing is to go seedless. Um, you know, seedless is better than no fruit at all. That's how I look at it. So, um, but the one thing I won't compromise is eating um, fruit that is fruit that isn't ripe because it, it's not it's not good for you. It's just not um, alkaline and it's just a um, hot mess. Like like pineapples. When I was younger, I didn't really like pineapple, and it always made my gums itch or my the roof of my mouth itch. And I think that was because it wasn't ripe, because I didn't really care for it. But as I got, and I always liked the canned pineapple because it's ripe and it's sitting in that stupid sugary sweet syrup. But then as I started this journey of eating better, I decided to try it again. Um, and I did have it when I lived in Hawaii. I ate a lot of pineapple because it's so ripe there. It's so delicious. And 
you know, the pineapples there look nothing like the pineapples we get here because they're picked at, well, they're ripe there. I mean, you can go like right in a pineapple field or go to the side of the road and somebody's carving up fresh pineapple right there that they just picked that's ripe. The skin should be like that amber color and not green or brown looking. So that's, that's the difference. But we've been able to get a, a lot of that good stuff here lately, but just not this time of year. And so since coming back from Hawaii, I just really like gave up on pineapple again. And then I was like, you know, let me just try it and see. And I've been able to get the more ripe pineapple and it's been amazing. And no itching of my mouth or throat or anything like that. And it's because it's ripe. It's it's peak freshness. It's delicious. So, you know, some things you can compromise on and, you know, take the loss when you can't get it, like the seeded grapes. But some things you just have to like back off of it. Like I'm not gonna get a pineapple right now. Not gonna get a watermelon. They're just not, it's just not good. Um, but anyway, I'm at, the st at another store. I have to pick up some new mason jars because I've been um, juicing and making fresh vegetable detox soups for my parents and trying to help them you know get some fresh nutritious food in their diet talking to them about eating better getting rid of the meat and pasta and rice and uh, oatmeal and milk and yogurt and stuff like that and eating better more whole nutritious foods steaming your vegetables versus boiling them to death and having more fresh juice and not buying store-bought juice and all that stuff. So I've been working with them a little bit. Um, how much it'll help, I don't know. I just pray that um, what I am saying is getting through to them and that they will uh, make better choices. I'm not expecting cold turkey. It didn't. It wasn't cold turkey for me. And as you guys know, I still have pizza every once in a while. Um, that's really the only thing that I still have at this point that's um, animal-based. And it's hard. So I'm not saying that they should go cold turkey. They do have some health issues that um, are an emergency, but you know, food is an addiction. It's hard to just stop your addiction and people will die for their addictions. People overdose from drugs all the time, overdose from alcohol. And you know, a lot of illnesses are overdosing from food consumption. Um, diabetes, type two diabetes is, is an overdose on food. You've you've ruined your pancreas based on the overload that you've done to it. And now you're dying from poor circulation issues and gangrene and um, sepsis and high blood pressure and kidney problems, fatty litter, litter, <laughs> fatty litter, fatty liver, um, all kinds of stuff, you know, it's from it's from overdosing on food so yeah the, we wouldn't have the obesity we have in the world and a lot of these health related issues that people think are um, generational or passed down or hereditary we wouldn't have them if uh, our food habits weren't hereditary from grandma to great grandma to great great grandma everybody's eating the same foods we're all gonna have the same diseases and I'm trying to stop it. I'm trying to stop it with myself. So I'm here to get mason jars. I go on these tangents, I'll tell you. I'm here to get mason jars because I used a lot of my mason jars to send um, fresh soups to my parents and um, salad dressings. I'm making salad dressings and of course, you know, sustaining Ron and I with our jars for juicing. So I'm here to get some more jars. Plus last week I busted a mason jar. I guess it already had a crack in it that um, wasn't leaking and I didn't realize that the integrity of the glass was compromised because I made a big 32 ounce jug of delicious juice in a mason jar, put it, apple juice, put it in the refrigerator. Like an hour later, I went back to grab it, grabbed it by the top. I heard a clink, clink, clink noise. It was like, Blink, 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 and then explosion. It exploded in my hand, the jar. I didn't drop it, it exploded. Glass everywhere, on the floor, and I didn't, I walk on my toes a lot, 
and I when the jar exploded I put my foot down and a two inch shard of glass was under my foot and it went right up through my foot um, toward my heel area toward the back of my foot and just before the arch it went straight in it didn't hurt right away it was just more like a warning 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 sound in my brain and I lifted my foot back up and I was like ah and I looked at the bottom of my foot and I pulled the glass out and it was just like I mean it was only two inches two inches is a lot when something is you know harmful going into your body but um, when I was pulling it out, it felt like forever. Like it just was coming and coming and coming. And then there's like blood squishing out everywhere all over the floor. Like it was just gross. So luckily it was a clean piece of glass. Like it clean, it was a clean break of glass. So it wasn't like, sh like jagged or anything. It was a point, like a needle. And I pulled it out clean, got all the glass out. I'm, I'm assuming, I'm hoping. And I, it took 45 minutes for the bleeding to stop. There was blood everywhere. I got um, blood on my carpet. So um, we took a towel and put it under my foot and I was like standing on it to apply the pressure on it. I soaked through the towel into my carpet and it was like a tea towel, like the kitchen towels. So it was all balled up just on, that, on the pressure of the, the spot that was bleeding and it soaked through into my carpet. So yeah, it was a lot of blood, um, but the hole wasn't big enough to go get stitches because although the shard of glass was two inches long, it was, it was so, it wasn't wide. It was like the size of like um, the thickness, a little bit thinner than like a thumbtack, the point of a thumbtack. I could have plugged it with a thumbtack. That's how small the hole was. So it wasn't big enough to go and get stitches. I don't know, maybe they would have done one stitch, but there was a lot of blood. Um, so it took about 45 minutes for it to stop bleeding. And then because of that, I didn't work out last week. It didn't go for walks, didn't have my swim lessons. Oh, that's another thing. I signed up for swim lessons. I don't know if I talked about that. Um, I haven't been on here a lot lately. But yeah, I signed up for swim lessons, so I've been doing that, but I haven't taken swim lessons in two weeks um, because of my hurt foot now. Um, this is the second week. And I just stopped limping yesterday. So I'm gonna get back on my um, movement tomorrow. And I'm going back to the gym, gonna take a yoga class, and Wednesday I'm gonna have my swim. So yeah. Oh, but I wanted to tell you, I spent um, $44 at the market and I got 16.6 pounds of grapes. So that was about, and I got three different kind. I got, um, white grapes, black grapes, and red grapes. And they were different prices. Like the red grapes were $2.49 a pound. The black grapes were also $2.49 a pound and the white grapes were $2.99 a pound. And then I just got six, um, limes, excuse me. So I can do grape lime juice. I like doing medleys. Like, I don't like doing just like, um, although I'm mo doing mono fruit, I would say, because I'm doing all grapes and last week I did all apples, but my all apples were like a medley of apples and like my grapes are a medley of grapes. And so yeah, that's gonna be my fruit for the week. I'll juice some and freeze some as a snack. Still eating my salads and chickpeas and um, wild rice. I got black rice and red rice. Um, my lentils, quinoa, making some delicious salads and stuff like that with that stuff. Um, we are, we do have a goal of cleaning out our refrigerator and freezer for the new year. So, you know, sometimes you might have leftover frozen veggies in our case frozen um fruit for smoothies but we're gonna we're gonna clean all of that stuff out before january 1st because then i'm gonna um start raw for a while just to uh start off the new year on a good note i don't know how long i'll go could be raw for 10 days 
could be seven days, could be 30 days, I don't know. But cleaning out all the leftovers that we have, we did clean out a lot of our canned goods and a lot of our boxes of pastas and rices and stuff over the last year. And so we're as that stuff goes away, we're not rebuying it, which is nice. Um, but I get torn between having a couple of things in the house for emergencies. Like if there's a food shortage, should I have a five pound bag of rice just so that we have food? Like I get torn between that. Um, but I'm just going to um, trust God and hope for the best. You know, I, I, I read something once where it said like a lot of people who are doing this hoarding of resources and toilet paper and food and stuff like that is because they don't trust God. And I'm torn on that because it's like, yes, I do trust God. Um, granted, my faith could be a lot stronger. I know that. But at the same time, sh aren't we supposed to, are we supposed to prepare? Like, are we supposed to get our house in order and, and, and does having your house in order include stockpiling food? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm torn. But I'm gonna, we're gonna clean out everything that we have and buy new. Um, not everything new because our lifestyle is changing, right? So we're not gonna buy, um, you know, big old things of rice anymore or pastas and things like that. But maybe it would be a good idea to have some jars of lentils and things like that just um, as a safety precaution. I don't, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We're definitely cleaning out everything we have so that we can start the whole year new with all fresh shopping haul that we're gonna do and I'm excited for it um, and yeah this person that parked next to me I think they're sitting in the car wondering why I'm sitting in the car talking so animated to myself because I looked over and they're looking right at me <laughs> I'm in Target parking lot I have to go get my jars I didn't expect to talk to you guys this long I had a lot to say I haven't talked to you in a while all right so I'm gonna go and um, have a beautiful day. Let me know what you guys think. Are you stockpiling food or, I don't know, say, uh, for an apocalypse or um, for food shortages? Like, are you guys doing that? Do you have like a reserve of food that you're keeping in the house for an emergency? Like I can tell you right now, if there were like a thunderstorm today, Ron and I are good because we have a lot of fruit in the house. Um, and even if the power went out, we couldn't make juice. We could just eat the fruit. Um, but we don't have a lot of other stuff. Like we have, a, like I said, we have like a little bit of rice left, some wild rice, a couple um, storage containers of lentils that we're going to use up, stuff like that. But what do you guys have? What kind of reserves are you guys stockpiling? And are you stockpiling or is it just like your regular home inventory so that you have your staples or whatever? All right, you guys. I'm going to go in the store and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.